Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at this book, Quest for the Historical Jesus, and we're looking at a scholar called Bruno Bauer, or Bohr, B-A-U-R. I'll, I'll call him Bohr, alright? Uh, Bruno Bohr was born in 1809 in Eisenberg in the Duchy of Sachsen, altenburg in philosophy, he was at first associated entirely with the Hegelian right. Like Strauss, he received a strong impulse from Wettke. At this stage of his development, he reviewed in 1835 and 1836 Strauss' Life of Jesus and wrote in 1838 a criticism of the history of Revelation. In 1834, he had become private teacher in Berlin but in 1839 he moved to Bonn. He was then in the midst of that intellectual crisis of which the evidence appeared in his critical works on John the Synoptics. In August 1841 the minister Etchon requested the faculties of the Prussian universities to report on the question whether Bar should be allowed to retain his teaching post. Most of them returned an evasive answer. Uh, Konigsberg replied in the affirmative and Bonn in the negative. In March 1842, Bauer, Bauer was obliged to cease lecturing and retired to Rixdorf near Berlin. The first heat of his furious indignation over this treatment, he wrote a work with the title Christianity Exposed, which however was cancelled before publication at Zurich in 1843. He then turned his attention to secular history and wrote on the French Revolution, on Napoleon, on the Illuminism of the 18th century and on the party struggles in Germany during the year 1842 to 1846. At the beginning of the 50s he returned to theological subjects but failed to exercise any influence. His work was simply ignored. Radical though he was in spirit, Bauer found himself fighting at the end of the 50s and beginning of the 60s in the ranks of the Prussian conservatives. We are reminded how Strauss in the Württemberg chamber was similarly forced to side with the reactionaries. He died in 1882 when he was a pure, modest and lofty character. At the time of his removal from Berlin to Bonn, he was just at the end of the 20s. Uh, that critical age when pupils often surprise their teachers when men begin to find themselves and show that they are not merely what they have been taught. In approaching an investigation of the history, of the gospel history, Barr saw, as he himself tells us, two ways open to him. He might take at his starting point the Jewish messianic conception and endeavour to answer the question how the intuitive prophetic idea of the Messiah became a fixed reflexive reflective conception. That was the historical method, and he chose, however, the other, the literary method. This starts from the opposite side of the question, from the end instead of the beginning of the his gospel history, taking first the Gospel of John, in which it is obvious that reflective thought has fitted the life of Jesus Messiah into the frame of Logos conception, he then starting, as it were, from the um, from this stream works his way upward to the high ground in which the gospel tradition takes its rise. The decision in favour of the later view determined the character of Barr's life work and it was his task to follow out to its ultimate consequences the literary solution of the problem of the life of Jesus. How far his path would lead him he did not first suspect but he did suspect how strong was the influence upon the formation of the history of dominant idea which moulds the shape in with it with a definite artistic purpose. His interest was especially arrested by definite artistic purpose. His interest was especially arrested by Philo, who, without knowing or intended it, contributed to the fulfilment of a higher task than that which he was immediately engaged. Barr's view is that the speculative principles such as Philo's, when it began to take, begins to take possession of men's minds, influences them in the first glow of enthusiasm, which it invokes with such overmastering power that the just claims of that which is actual and historical, cannot always secure the attention, is the due in Philo pupil, John we must look, not for history, but for art. The fourth gospel is in fact a work of art. This was now for the first time appreciated by one who was himself an artist. Schleimacher in, indeed had a, at an earlier period taken up the aesthetic standpoint in the gospel, considering this gospel. 
but he had used it as an apologist proceeding to exalt the artistic truth uh, which he rightly recognised into historic reality and his critical sense failed him precisely because he was an aesthetic and an apologist when he came to deal with the fourth gospel now however uh, there comes for, forward a true artist who shows that the depths of religion and intellectual insight with which Fuller can neander in opposing Strauss had urged on behalf of the false gospel is Christian art. Um, so we'll leave it there. That's just a little bit about uh, Bruno Barr. Uh, my thoughts are that uh, the gospel is obviously a work of art, it's a literary masterpiece, but it's rooted in history. There are over 40 historical facts in the Gospel of John. The writer of the Gospel of John was an eyewitness account and also uh, knew Jerusalem extremely detailedly and so it was just not, it was more than art, it was rooted in history and eyewitness material. That's what I think anyway. Uh, so that's a little bit about Bruno Barr, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Alright, take care.